Kaito is one of the most hated characters in all of Jujutsu Kaisen and that is within reason of course. Through most of his presence in the series, he has made his job to get in the way of the characters we love and are meant to root for, most notably Nanami, Nobara and the main character of the series, Juji Itadori. With his very eccentric and annoying way of expressing himself and even fighting, Maito exemplifies true chaos. But in that very chaos lies something underneath that even gets paralleled with Juji later on in the middle of Shibuya Incident Arc that illustrates Mahito and even Juji's role in the series. With him being stopped at the tail end of Shibuya Incident Arc and with no sign of a potential return at the time of recording this video, I wanted to take a quick glance on Mahito as an antagonist and go over his chaotic nature throughout the series and make sense of why he's one of the best characters in all of Jujutsu Kaisen. To get into the very root of Maito's character, we need to look into his personality and what he actually is supposed to represent as a curse. To give you the rundown of how curses exist in Jujutsu Kaisen, they come from negative emotions from humans as they leak cursed energy. These negative emotions can range from various feelings whether they might be love, anxiety, or even fear. As Hanami states in Shibuya Incident Arc, death is something humans fear and detest but humans linger beyond it as well. Death is a mirror for humans and Mahito is that mirror. Mahito essentially represents humanity's fear of death and what is potentially beyond it. When you look at his abilities like Edo Transfiguration for instance, one in which he's able to reshape souls as he sees fit and see what he ends up doing throughout the series, it all slowly starts adding up. Then we also have his personality which is extremely sadistic and manipulative. How he interacts with characters like Junpei early on in the series, he basically gets a kick playing with people's emotions and this becomes a very common theme with his dynamic with Juji from the demise of Junpei all the way to his eventual downfall. A moment that shows Mahito's philosophy surrounding souls is where he tells Junpei that life has no weight or particular value like water flowing through the earth and ironically tells him to live the way he wants as there isn't a reason to live being indifferent and he supports everything that Junpei represents. Because of his nature as a curse, it wasn't as if he learned to be this manipulative, but rather, this was something he was always born with and is ingrained into his very being. This leads into the massive parallel that gets created by Mahito in the arc that serves to be the turning point of not only his character but also Juji. That of course is the Shibuya Incident arc. To say that Mahito's role in this arc is massive doesn't do it justice. For him being one of the key factors in the Shibuya plan to seal Gojo as he uses Ito Transfigure to create a multitude of transfigured humans, to breaking Juji down emotionally after just being through hell because of Sukuna's destructive actions against Mahoraga, Maito's character and who he truly is as an individual is laid bare with dialogue that perfectly encapsulates the war between Jujutsu sorcerers and curses. Maito calls into question Juji's resolve as he says that the fight they are under is a clash of truths. He even says that he kills people without a second thought, just how Juji saves them. Maito even asks the question how many curses has Juji killed? To put into perspective, this conversation takes place after Mahito kills both Nanami and Obara in front of his very eyes, just similarly to Junpei. Juji, who has shown rage towards Mahito for what he has done, never really took a step back and asked himself the question of why Mahito is the way that he is, nor realized the fight he is actually in with Mahito. This is not an individual who is doing things for twisted noble causes like in many other shonen series, but rather someone whose entire nature is killing humans as he is a cursed spirit who represents the fear of death and beyond that humans have. Looking at things through this lens, it is not a coincidence that Mahito put Juji in the scenario of witnessing people he wanted to save die in front of his very eyes multiple times. From laughing alongside Sukuna at his desperation to save a transfigured Junpei, mocking Juji's rage after killing Nanami in a horrific fashion, and even not letting Juji grieve Nobara's death and attacking him with a black flash mercilessly, Mahito time and time again made it his mission to mentally destroy 
destroy Juji, and while that might have been for the sake of his mission in Shibuya, it definitely turned into a sadistic pleasure for him. This of course doesn't last for too long as Toto pulls Juji from his mental breakdown and despair to put an end to Mahito's insane rampage in Shibuya. From using Black Flash and even his final form, instant body of distorted killing, Mahito throws everything including kitchen sink in order to kill Juji. However, thanks to Toto's mind game of faking Boogie Woogie, Juji finishes Mahito off with a Black Flash breaking his form. With no more transfigured humans at his disposal, we get a moment that defines Mahito's character alongside Juji's and puts the exclamation point. Juji responds to what Mahito said to him saying that he is indeed just like him. He doesn't need a reason to kill Mahito just like Mahito doesn't need a reason to kill other humans and he will chase after him if he ever comes back in whatever way possible. He even calls himself a cog in a machine as despite not knowing if the results of his actions will change anything, he will continue doing so as that is his role. Mahito's face as Juji responds back with the same if not even more cruelty that he did at Juji's expense, not only has Mahito shake but also run away as he has now become Juji's prey. Mahito throughout the series has tormented not only Juji but many other characters and even put them 6 feet under. So seeing a pathetic display to this extent as Maito is the rabbit to Juji's wolf as his ankle gets broken and having a breakdown as he throws mud at Juji and even hides a rock in there is the perfect karma to the evilness that Maito brought in the series. Add to the false sense of hope Maito has as he sees Geta who thinks will save him from Juji's wrath just to end up being absorbed and used by him is the perfect irony and if this is how Maito's character concludes, this was an incredible way to go out. To wrap this up, Maito's role as an antagonist in Jujutsu Kaisen is to illustrate the dark nature of cursed spirits and how these aren't beings that are to be reasoned with but to be exterminated as they feed off of people's fear and despair. Juji, who at the beginning was more hopeful about things, couldn't seem to get Maito at death's door or mirror in this instance, but as soon as he discarded his individuality and accepted that him and Maito are two sides of the same coin, it's what let Maito's own demise proves this notion to be the correct way despite how screwed up and downright toxic that way of thinking may be. Maito, who appeared all the way until chapter 133 and episode 22 of season 2, he definitely left a mark as a villain who didn't care what means to use in order to achieve his goals even if that came at a cost of well beloved characters in the series and with ideologies and dynamics that serve the purpose of illustrating the true danger of cursed spirits, Maito served his purpose beautifully and that wouldn't have been done if it wasn't for his very chaotic nature in Jujutsu Kaisen. To end this video, I want to know if you love Maito as a villain and if you don't, leave a comment and explain why. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe to the channel with the notification bell to never miss a video of mine. And with that, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day wherever you are. See you guys next time. I'll just kill you. And if you're ever reborn again as a new curse, I'll kill you then too. Change your name and appearance, I'll still kill you again and again. I don't need meaning or a reason anymore. Maybe there will be some meaning to be found. Because... That seems to be my role in this war.